Hi divers, this is Alec Pierce from Scuba 2000 with another tech tip. Little ideas that might make your scuba diving more enjoyable and maybe safer too. Today we're going to talk about things your scuba instructor told you that can hurt you. Now, he didn't lie to you, but maybe some of the things he told you are carryovers from his instructor from his instructor. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. For instance, when you turn the air on on your scuba system, did he tell you to turn the pressure gauge away from your face? Very, very common. If he did, that's wrong. Let me explain. In the old days, in 50s and 60s, when pressure gauges first became available, actually 62, they looked like this. They were made of solid brass. Isn't that beautiful? Chrome solid brass. They had a plastic or glass face, and the, face, the, the glass was actually, you could actually remove the, the front on it, take it out, adjust the gauge a little bit, clean it, and so on. These gauges were very, very solid and strong. Occasionally, if the gauge mechanism inside the little thin brass board and tube broke or leaked, the pressure built up inside the solid brass case wouldn't break, but the glass or plastic would, and it would come flying off right into the diver's face if he was looking at it. It usually would only happen, didn't happen often, when you were turning the air on. So, what do you do? Face the gauge away from you, of course. That was in the 50s and 60s. This is 2014. Goodness gracious. Let's look at a modern gauge made of plastic. Tough plastic. You see this? Nice clear face, hard plastic case. Doesn't come apart. There's no ring. You can't open this case. Same Borden tube inside, thin brass. Now, if this Borden tube, the mechanism inside, leaks or breaks, air pressure builds up inside, what's going to happen? Well, potentially, it's only plastic pressure builds up. It could boom. Then you get pieces of plastic flying all over. To prevent that, what they've done is they put a pressure relief knob in the back. There's a little plug in there. In fact, it says right on here, do not plug, do not block the pressure relief plug on there. You don't want to plug that. So if the pressure builds up, that little plug's going to come flying out and the case doesn't blow apart. Nobody gets hurt. Oh, of course, unless you've got it facing you like this, gauge facing away. Because now if the pressure gauge has a problem, that little plug's going to come flying out like a 22 bullet and go right into your face and could possibly hurt you. In fact, if you look at the boot that your pressure gauge is in, whether it's a single boot or a console, you'll see there's a hole in the back of the boot to match the pressure plug. So the pressure plug isn't prevented from doing its job and will come flying right through. Okay, there you go. Don't turn your gauge away from you. If you're going to do anything, cover it completely. Turn it away from you, turn your face away. Turn the air on slowly, and you're perfectly safe. There's something that your instructor may not have known. Let's look at another example. Did your instructor tell you to turn the tank valve all the way on and turn it back a little bit? Wrong. Years ago, again, in the 50s and 60s, scuba tank valves looked like this. They're a solid piece of brass with a knob on top, pressure relief valve, O-ring. Early ones had a piece of plastic, didn't have O-rings tapered threads. You had to wrap these in tape or some other compound or put them in with a great big wrench. They were a lot different than they are today. Did the same job, but a lot different. And with these old, old valves, occasionally when you open the valve all the way, the brass would expand or contract and the little parts in there would get jammed up and you couldn't get the darn thing turned off at the end of the dive. So it was common practice to open the valve all, stuck right there, turn the valve all the way open and then turn it back a little bit so that wouldn't happen. Very common. Now let's take a look at a modern valve. This is a brand new valve, a modern valve. This is the ones you use in your tanks. Straight thread sealed with an O-ring, pressure relief, nice and shiny and chrome. And it has a large, easy to use knob on the side. This valve is turned off, we know because it's red. Let's turn it on. Turn the valve all the way on. The red disappears, it's replaced by green. This valve is now on, open, and ready to die. With these modern valves, using modern materials, stainless steel, Teflon, and silicone, they don't freeze open. So when you use it, when you turn it on, open it all the way, not hard, just to the end and stop. The valve is wide open, unrestricted airflow. Your buddy can see it's green, and he knows that the valve is wide open. This little device that shows green and red, by the way, is available at most modern dive stores. It's called the Vindicator. Neat device. Let me show you something else kind of interesting. I call this a K valve. Some people will call this a K valve too. Where did that K come from? So we take a look in this original old catalog from 1954, and we look at the page that has the valves on it, you'll be able to see why it's called a K valve. Because right down here in the bottom left-hand corner, this valve is called a K valve. You see the letter K? It was the K product. And that's the on-off valve 
looks different, the same vowel we use today. Over here is a J vowel, you see it? J. It had a constant spring-loaded reserve, air reserve in it. There's a J1, J2 for two tanks, J3 for three tanks. The vowel we use today is the K vowel. Now you know why it's called a K vowel. And I hope you enjoyed this little bit of history and the tips about vowels and little things your instructor told you that aren't true. See you again for another Tech Tip soon. Safe diving.